last year in 2020, I have started this lecture series with Beethoven's earliest, his first published sonata. I closed the year 2020 then with his last piano sonata. Those earliest and last piano sonatas of Beethoven represented the early period and the composer's late period. This new year, 2021, I would like to start with the energetic Opus 53, the Waldstein, to represent his middle period. And a couple of months from now, I will continue with the darker Opus 57, the Appassionata. This middle period is often known as the heroic decade, lasting about 10 years from 1802 to 1812. So what was it about this heroic decade? It all started with the composer's letter to his brothers, Carl and Johann. This letter, so-called the Heiligenstadt Testament, become one of the greatest legacies of Beethoven. It is a personal testimony about rising up above his depression, accepting his faith and destiny. Here is what Beethoven had to say. What a humiliation when one stood beside me and heard a flute in the distance, and I heard nothing. Or someone heard the shepherd singing, and again, I heard nothing. Such incidents brought me to the verge of despair, but little more and I would have put an end to my life. We still find traces of this sorrow. This wall stand is full of sudden exchange of major and minor modes. Here is an example of that. This is just one among many others throughout the sonata. This is from the first movement, the interplay of E minor and E major. And this is a very famous example from the opening of the second movement, Beethoven disguised the tonality. We find here E major shift to E minor. And here is another one from the third movement. But then he wrote, Only art it was that it helped me. Ah, it seems impossible to leave the world until I had produced all that I felt called upon me to produce. And so I endured this wretched existence, truly wretched. I believe it was not only the physical isolation, but the social isolation that Beethoven had to endure as well. But here a strong man, standing tall to bravely be in charge of his divine and ultimate calling. Let us take a look to another passage of his letter. This is actually the part of the opening of his letter. From childhood, my heart and mind were disposed to the gentle feelings of goodwill. I was even ever eager to accomplish great deeds. Here we can see the ambitious Beethoven had come to the grip of his calling since his youth. So this letter serves as the reaffirmation of his purpose of living. Beethoven was a man of noble spirit and mind, and he expressed that in his music. Here is another expression of Beethoven's noble spirit and mind. Forced already in my 28th year to become a philosopher. Oh, it is not easy. Less easy for the artist than for anyone else. Define one, thou lookest into my inmost soul. Thou knowest it. Thou knowest that love of man and desire to do good live therein. 
During the middle period of Beethoven, Napoleon Bonaparte was rising to the political power and became a heroic figure for the composer. Beethoven originally saw Napoleon as a person who could deliver liberty and equality to all mankind. Beethoven originally dedicated his third symphony for Napoleon, but later crossed out the dedications when he figured out his hero was just another imperialist. Let us hear some heroic spirit in this Waldstein sonata. When talking about the heroic spirit, it is impossible not to talk about the opening of the first movement, the marching or the running steps here with those repeated notes. And what a sudden turn to be flat major, but so effective, so noble as if gazing to the far distance with strong optimism, to the far future full of hope. But here, you again find the C major turn quickly to C minor. The repeated chord figuration dominates the entire first movement, the strong determinations, the ambitious pursuit. Here is another example, 14 bars of drum rolls. This shows the strong confidence of Beethoven, his stubborn nature yet brilliant. 14 bars of dominant seven prolongations that successfully building up tensions for the return of the main theme. Now we have the opening of the Rondo 3rd movement. Pay attention to the little drum sound in the left hand. That is like an expression of the inner strength beneath the childlike melody and fluent accompaniment. And this is how that little drum develops to be the giant drums. There are many heroic spirits throughout this sonata if we explore further. One of my favorite passages is here, the triumphant steps of the left hand with trumpet-like trill on the right hand. Of course, it is worth mentioning the horn fanfare to close the sonata. Let us now go back to what the Heiligenstadt Testament did to the compositions of Beethoven afterward. Here are the list of Beethoven's publications around this era. Opus 53, The Waldstein. Opus 54, Another Piano Sonata. Opus 55, Symphony No. 3, Eroica or Heroic. Opus 56, Triple Concerto. Opus 57, Piano Sonata No. 23, The Appassionata. We jump a little bit then to Opus 67, his very famous Symphony No. 5. Then Opus 73 also, his Grand Piano Concerto No. 5, his last Piano Concerto, The Emperor. All bear the same feature, the Grand Design. This Grand Design became one of the prominent features in Romanticism. Beethoven with his Grand Design in this middle period had participated in paving the way for the Romantic period to arrive. Therefore, I would focus on one important aspect of this Piano Sonata Opus 53. That is Beethoven's grand design and how pianists could deliver such a prominent quality in their performances. Here you find the title of my lecture tonight, Approaching the Colossal Construction. For this purpose, I have prepared three examples from this famous sonata. We will take a look at each of them, how they are constructed and how we respond to such a construction. Here is example number one. Let us take a look at the ending of this sonata. Beethoven asks for a prestissimo for his long coda. And at the end of this coda, 
he wrote these 29 measures of pedal point in C, having the harmony oscillating only between tonic and dominant. The last 15 measures are purely in C major. Let's listen to this passage. Now what to do after knowing such a colossal construction? Here I would like to introduce the structural directions as one of the most essential components in performing any piece, but it is even more essential for a piece of colossal constructions like this sonata. What do I mean by this? Let's look at this ending again. I pick this ending as the first example because it will be the easiest for you to understand and for me to explain about the structural direction. If you watch a long movie of colossal proportion, you would expect a satisfying ending. My favorite is the Lord of the Ring trilogy. There, I expect the ending must be something so glorious, triumphant. The same truth is for a musical composition. It is very simple to understand here. After about 20 minutes of a musical journey plus a long coda, which is like the final battle, the epic saga, I must bring to an end this giant satisfyingly. Therefore, I can summarize from this example, a structural direction is looking at the whole picture, the complete picture, what a passage means or what a passage functions for. A very long piece needs a very strong ending, as simple as that. But how can I make it strong? I must pick up the momentum all the way to the arrival point at the very last chord. Okay, this sounds makes sense and easy, right? Well, not until you have to play or perform it. Theoretically so easy and so very logical. But there are challenges that can easily distract us from fulfilling this mandate. Failing to pick up momentum all the way to the very last chord means that I will be losing the colossal conceptions, losing the colossal spirit and mind of the composers, losing the heroic, the grand design that Beethoven had poured out his soul into this piece. Such a big loss, such a huge consequence. Now we will take a look at the challenges. First, we see how many small fragments this passage has. We need to do some organizations with these little fragments so that we do not get trapped into restarting the momentum when we begin each fragment. This trap happens when we try to shape the phrasings of these little fragments and unaware of being sidetracked from building up the momentum toward the end. The giant red arrow here in the picture. We should never lose sight of this giant red arrow or we will lose the colossal constructions, a strong ending intended by the composer. First, we will regroup these little fragments into larger pair. Look carefully at the picture and pay attention to the first two fragments. Now I tie the two together. And the same to the next two. And the next two. But before we proceed, let us take a look at this last fragment we just regrouped. It is actually an extension of the previous group and therefore I will join them together. Now we go, a unification, and now the same process applies to a larger grouping. I'm going to group the first two segments together. These two segments together. Here we go, a big chunk. So in our performance, we can have a strong momentum built up, particularly having the extensions I explained earlier. Let us hear first now this one huge union. The same process continues for the next part. Let us recall the constructions and observe the statement echo pairing. Here we go. We have a pair of statement and echo to begin with. Then another pair. And then look next. We have an echo of echo plus an extension. Then 
then the last two chords have their echo and this echo has its echo an octave lower back to another echo and a huge echo of echo and finally we have echo of echo of echo here before the final chord i believe this is how the mind of beethoven work the prolongations process of tonic and dominant chords So here we go, two huge chunks remain after we reorganize. Let me make them clear now. Here you go. By now, you are already well familiar with the pedal point, so I need not to show that any longer in the picture. The marker for pedal point is cleared. Now this looks even clearer. Now you can see the two large chunks clear, and I have a purpose for doing this. The blue segment contains a condensation process. Meaning the motif gets tighter and tighter, especially with the extensions at the end. The purple segment carries the evaporations of the motif. Graphically, you can see the notes are getting tighter in the first half from mostly crotchets to all quavers. But on the second half, the opposite, from four notes in a measure to only one or two. Now, there is a danger in the evaporation that naturally the tension becomes looser and looser. And this is the battle that is very natural to happen that a performer must fight that the tendency of losing the tension. The red giant arrow must always remain in our sight as our goal, as a performer. Without finding the meaning of such constructions, we are just a machine performing the notes. This third movement starts with a relaxed atmosphere almost nostalgic of the childhood's pure joy. And here, even though it becomes thicker and faster, like an adult pursuing a live stream, still there is a child within. The seemingly nonsense ending, the evaporation notes, to me portrays the distancing childhood Especially in bar 538, there I find the childlike playfulness immediately followed in the next bar by the gigantic fortissimo, the strength and the determinations of the adulthood. The condensation is like the adult Beethoven pursuing his calling and dream. The evaporation is like the distancing childhood, something to be missed. But the big chord ending is like the strong determinations to embrace the adulthood and its responsibilities. Here is the second example. Similar challenges, but we can apply the same principle. We have here 59 bars of anticipations for the big coda. The first 17 bars are with pedal point in C, followed by 7 bars of sequences. And then along 35 bars of G pedal point. Here we find the same feature, the evaporation. The density is lower, but we must maintain and even continue to build up the intensity. We must not lose sight of the red giant arrow here, the structural direction. Even though we are undergoing a lower density in the area I label here as the evaporation segment, from semiquavers to crotchets and eventually with one bar full rest, intertwining. And let's find meaning for our interpretation. To me, the anticipation is like a runner running for the final race, and this evaporation passage is like the runner is arriving at the gate of the final race and getting ready to win this final race prestissimo.
Before we leave these examples, let me remind you again. The focal point of this example is the red giant arrow. In this third example, the same organizations needed to overcome the challenge of restoring few times with the process of shaping the smaller phrases. It is your homework now to try to do the same reorganizing so that you may create a strong structural direction. If not, the musical goal is lost. The glorious homecoming of the recapitulation is missed. The piece loses its power. It becomes boring and lengthy. And let me now do the recapitulations of my lecture with the hope it is going to be an aha moment, a glorious homecoming to the main point that now you understand about the colossal conceptions from the middle period of Beethoven and how to accomplish such design, a monumental features of Beethoven that eventually paved the way for the romantic period and that favors so much the grand design. <laughs>